Nike makes their shoes for $2 a pair. The Yeezy costs $10 to make and Adidas sells it for $350. Sneakers could be considerably cheaper if brands stopped paying all that money to Kanye West, Steph Curry and LeBron James. Some of you might have read comments like these on the internet. But what is the true cost of making a running shoe and how much do Nike and Adidas earn when you buy a new pair? The big brands are very discreet when talking about production costs. Especially since the sweatshop controversy, the companies are very careful what data to share with the public. Luckily, there is a great piece about the cost of making a sneaker by industry expert Rahul C that he published on his website Soul Review. So what are the exact costs to make a running shoe and what kind of profits can ultimately be made in this business? As you'll soon discover, factory costs happen to be only a tiny part of the entire story. Let's get straight to the point. We chose shoe models from Adidas and Nike and show what it cost to make each one of them. We looked at the average cost of different colors across a single model because factory costs differ based on the color. The individual costs mentioned here are 95% accurate because of currency conversion and are factory or FOB costs. FOB is short for free on board, which is the cost of shoes when loaded on the vessel at the port of origin usually in the country where the factory is located. The term is self-explanatory. By quoting the FOB cost, the supplier means, hey, we'll take care of transporting the finished shoes till the shipping port. It's free till that point. And once the shoes are on board of the ship, it's your problem. The numbers you see are the FOB costs for specific shoe models based on ocean shipping data. There's a good reason why we chose Adidas and Nike for this exercise. They are public companies, giving everyone access to their income statements. That allows us to tie in other calculations to the cost of the shoe and deduce the average profit made by brands on each pair. In the absence of any context, these numbers seem obscene. A shoe which sells for $160 costs $30 to make? That's a profit of $130 per pair. Shoe companies are truly ripping us off. But that is as good as looking at a person who earns a salary of 200k a year and say, 200k a year? That guy can save a million dollars in five years. That makes no sense, does it? Because out of the 200k salary, one will have to account for mortgage and car payments, education loans, insurance, food, fuel costs, taxes and whatnot. So while 200k a year is a comfortable salary to live on, the actual savings left over after expenses are a mere fraction of that. A fitting analogy would be to equate your salary to the retail price of a shoe and your savings to a brand's net profit after tax. In 2019, Adidas made around 8% in net income after taxes and Nike made around 10%. But remember that brand income statements are based on wholesale revenue and not retail price. So if you had to calculate the brand margin as a percentage of the retail price, then Adidas and Nike made around 4 and a 5% profit respectively. This is assuming that the wholesale revenue is half of the retail price. We'll explain those terms in a bit. In other words, for a shoe priced at $100, Adidas earned just around $4 and Nike made 5. But didn't we just say that a $160 shoe is produced for 30? So where does the rest of the money disappear? The factory cost only represents the first step of a finished product's journey. As it leaves the country of origin, where it is manufactured, additional costs get piled on, leading to the landed cost. Since the FOB cost only covers the stage of transporting the shoe from the factory to the local seaport, the brand has to cover the cost of transporting it from Asia to the final destination. It is also possible the ship might run into a nasty storm and drop a few containers containing thousands of sneakers into the ocean. So the brand has to pay for insurance to cover for any unforeseen circumstances. This works exactly like buying personal travel insurance with your plane ticket. When the shoe finally reaches a US port, the shipment is assessed for custom duties. There are different duty structures even for the same commodity. So one type of footwear can have a 10% rate of duty and another could be as high as 20. At this point, the factory cost has turned into cost, insurance, freight, 
and custom import duties. This is known as the landed cost and is approximately 21% higher than the factory cost. The landed cost is used to derive the cost of sales. Basically, this is the amount the company has to spend until the shoe arrives in their warehouse. And what exactly does net sales or revenue mean for a brand? When buying a pair of shoes, you might not necessarily do so directly from the brand. You'll probably head over to Amazon or perhaps your local footlocker. These stores and chains buy it from brands such as Adidas and Nike, who in turn offer them a margin to cover their operational expenses and make a small profit. The discounted rate offered to retailers is known as the revenues or net sales for the brands. The industry average for retailer margins is approximately 50%, which means a brand like Adidas or Nike sells a $100 shoe to their partners for $50. The calculations work differently when brands sell through their stores or websites because they are selling to customers directly. However, direct sales are a fast-growing but still small part of a footwear business. The difference between the landed cost and price offered to retailers is known as the gross margin. As you can see, a $100 shoe ends up being $22 in landed costs and the brand sells it to a third-party retailer for $50. For a brand, the gross margin is $28. In percentage terms, it will be 56%. This gross margin number is included in income statements made available to Wall Street. So far, so good. But we haven't discussed other expenses, like the cost of running a shoe brand. What do those numbers look like? In 2019, Adidas had a gross margin of over 50%, while Nike made around 45. Numerically astute viewers might notice a disconnect. It appears that some of the Adidas running shoes cost much more to make than similarly priced Nike shoes. So if Nike shoes cost less to make than Adidas, how can they end up with a lower gross margin? We can make an educated guess. From a product standpoint, Adidas sells a lot more apparel than Nike, and generally apparel is a higher margin business. Nike has always been a footwear brand, and that shows in their numbers. Out of the total gross margin, Brands will have to pay for staff salaries, distribution costs, marketing, depreciation, taxes and other business-related expenses. Fortunately, most of these numbers are available for everyone to see, as long as the brand is publicly traded. In 2019, Nike spent almost 10% of its net sales on marketing and Adidas spent even more. For all expenses other than marketing, Nike spent 23% and the German brand spent almost 29%. The taxman also needs his cut. So in 2019, Nike and Adidas paid 16% and 25% respectively. After spending all that cash, what's left is the net income. As mentioned previously, that happens to be 8% of net sales for Adidas and 10% for Nike. Let's look at the overall picture. On a pair of $100 shoes, Adidas just makes a profit of $4. Nike fares a bit better, making $5 as profit on a pair of $100 running shoes. Now you have a general idea of what's behind the price tag of your new sneaker. Do you think it's reasonable or overpriced? If you like this video, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more videos about the sports industry.